talk about something that I have another topic that I've also changed my mind on and that is how often to eat and uh, I've, I've changed on this big time from what I was taught what worked for me in my early 20s so I want to talk about that if you guys like um, content for how to be healthy as you age uh, like and subscribe and if you have comments I'd love to hear your comments on how this relates to you um, if you've changed on this or how your body's changed as you've aged I'd love to hear it so a lot of the content is you know we interview nutritionists doctors personal trainers and I kind of gear this towards um, people who are older adults or beginner exercisers or you just trying to change your lifestyle and your health and you're just uh, starting to do that so here's what's different now when I was in my early 20s I was in the gym six days a week uh, and I'm talking you know 21 22 23 I was in the gym six days a week um, three and a half three three and a half hours every day I was burning up a lot of calories plus just having a really fast metabolism and that's not counting the running that I was doing um, in the off season preparing for football I was out running sprints and all kinds of different field work too where I was burning a lot of calories and I don't think this was a bad approach for me at that time I was eating every two hours. I was getting carbohydrates every two hours. And I was teaching this to people who were way older than me, especially when I became a personal trainer at about age, you know, 24, 25 and on. I was teaching people in their 60s to do what I was doing. And that was wrong because their bodies are not the same as me. And I'm, I'll get to, as we go, get going on this, I'll tell you what I do now and what works for me. But I was eating every two hours and my goal was to get to about 6,000 calories and that helped me pretty much just maintain my weight. And I remember eating that many calories going, man, I wish I could go on a diet. I wish I could just not eat for a day. And, you know, if I didn't eat for a day, I'd lose a lot of ground, a lot of calories. So it wasn't fun trying to eat that many calories every day. And eating every two hours I was getting carbs every two hours and that I, I believe kind of increased my appetite but I needed those carbs but and I was very metabolically healthy then and I'm metabolically healthy now even though I eat very differently so being very metabolic uh, healthy back when I was 22 23 eating every hour and a half every two hours getting carbs in you know starches and fruits and as things that had as many calories as i could get um it i i was probably a glucose yo-yo you know insulin being released and just all over the place and that made my body work really fast and now that I'm over 60, I can't do that. It's not going to be healthy for me. And if you go a whole day without eating, I really believe this now. This is where I've changed. It's, you're not going to die. You're not going to kill your metabolism. It's not going to slow down. If you do that every once in a while, you go 24 or... 36 hours without eating and 36 hours is not that hard um, if you eat in the morning and then you go past dinner and you sleep and then you go another 12 hours it's it's not that hard um, but it for now my body likes that and I have an eating window usually of about six hours now, I will do some things in those non-eating hours, but I know it doesn't spike 
my glucose. For instance, in the morning, I'll take three swigs of extra virgin organic olive oil. That does not spike my glucose. So I don't count that as eating because it's it, my glucose just stays right here. You know, it might go up five to 10 points max. That's it. Uh, usually not even that. The other thing that does not spike my glucose is essential amino acids. So I'll use essential amino acids also in my non-eating window. I can drink a cup of coffee and that won't, even with some heavy whipped cream in it um, or heavy cream in it, that won't spike my glucose either. So I know I can do that. So my eating window is about five hours, maybe six hours. And my first meal is usually I'm getting, it might be a protein shake, a double protein shake, where I'm getting 70 to 75 grams of protein, a lot of protein. And I'll do that maybe before I go work out. And recent research and opinions that I've heard um, is, is saying or um, speculating that that protein is going to stay with you and you, it's going to stay in the amino acid pool and your body's going to be able to use it throughout the rest of the day, which is good news. You know, when I was in college, it was also, you know, you can't use more than 30 grams of protein. Now they're saying up to 100 grams of protein, just some videos I've watched. Uh, with doctors and experts on this, uh, not me, but um, you know, it's it's um, it makes sense to me that your body's going to use that. So, uh, it, and it's going to use that instead of um, turning it to sugar or not processing it. So my next meal, again, I'm I'm trying to get 70, 75 grams of protein in again, and that's usually around 4:30 or five. So my eating window is about five, six hours, six hours maybe, um, normally. And giving my body that long rest period of not eating is not hurting me. It may not have been a benefit when I was in my early 20s. For one, it how was I going to get enough calories eating twice? I mean, if you eat you know, two meals at, you know, try to eat a meal, a healthy meal and get 1500 or 2000 calories in. That's not easy. And to do that twice. Okay. Now I'm at 3000, maybe 4000. That wasn't enough for me back then. Now I don't need that much. So my first meal can be 600 calories. My next meal, you know, can be a thousand, which is a healthy, substantial amount of food. And my calories are still low for the day. But my body responds differently. That's all I'm saying. And that's what I've changed. That's where I've changed my mind for me. I can fast for 24 hours. I can have a smaller eating window. And it's actually going to help my health. It's going to actually help my metabolic health. And that, those long periods of not eating... It's not going to shut down my metabolism. It's not going to harm me. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to starve to death. And it actually lets my glucose stay down in a, at a, you know, in the, in, in the mornings, my, my glucose is almost always in the seventies. Sometimes it may be up to like 84, 85, but lately it's been in the seventies, you know, anywhere between 72 and 78 which I'm very happy with. And now I'm letting it stay at that level more time throughout the day. And I think it's really helped my health. So anyway, um, that's my two cents on something that I've changed my mind on. And that is how often to eat. I eat two times a day, sometimes one time a day. Um, I am getting nutrients in that uh, non-eating period of the day, though I am you know, maybe some coffee or uh, amino acids and definitely some monounsaturated fat in the form of olive oil. But I have changed my diet. I've changed my mind on what someone in their 60s should do compared to what somebody in their 20s can get away with. Mm -hmm.